Hi, I'm Taylor Combalusier, Vice President and Mining Analyst at Red Cloud Securities. Welcome to RCTV. We're here with Torque Resources CEO and Chair Sean Wallace and Michael Heinrichsen, the Chief Geological Officer. Thank you for joining us today, gentlemen. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Torque is a Red Cloud banking client. Uh, today, we will be looking forward to hearing the latest about Torque's mission uh, to explore for copper and gold in prominent mining belts in Chile, the premier copper mining jurisdiction in the world. To kick things off, uh, maybe could you just give us a high-level overview of your key assets, assets with respect to location, infrastructure, and stage of projects? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Um, uh, we have three assets in the company. We have the uh, Santa Cecilia project, which is uh, which I would say would be our flagship project. Uh, it's located in the Maraconga Belt uh, in, in, in the Andes in Chile. Um, it is uh, well situated that it's uh, sort of enveloped by the Norte Abierto joint venture, which is a joint venture between Barrick and Newmont. Um, it's significant uh, gold and copper resources exist in this belt, and you know we're fortunate to have gotten a little uh, a, a sizable piece of land in there that's very perspective. Um, the project did see some work in the late 90s when people were uh, on the back of successes at other belts like El Indio, uh, that they, they were looking for high-grade gold, and uh, uh, some major mining companies were in there and drilled a number of holes in search of that. Um, the sort of gold copper porphyry potential hadn't been uh, realized or understood or uh, at that point. So uh, they moved along, uh, as we would have too if we had got the results they did, but you know, they, they're becoming meaningful now. Um, so the project sort of sat frozen in time, like a time machine for us. And, and what happened was uh, between 1990 and 2012, uh, Caspiche was discovered, um, Sarah Casale was discovered, a bunch of other deposits were discovered, you know, 50 million ounces of gold, 20 billion pounds of copper, significant uh, resources. And the underlying owner from whom uh, we acquired the project um, decided that, well, all these porphyries have been found. Perhaps there's a porphyry on, on, my, on my, my claims. So he drilled two holes, and in fact, he got 925 meters of about, you know, 0.45% uh, copper equivalent. And that was really what, for us, was enough. We say, okay, there's a big mineralized system here. Uh, it's, it's nestled in amongst monster deposits. Uh, this is, you know, this is significant. And having had a lot of experience personally, both of us, uh, working on these big bulk tonnage deposits, we know all if, where there's one or two, there's going to be three or four. And that's sort of the premise uh, that we move forward with an acquisition on. Um, we just completed uh, two drill holes of our own, and uh, it was fantastic. Um, uh, but we'll talk about that in a bit as well. So, And then we have the Margarita Project. Uh, the Margarita Project is, is an IOCG-type uh, target. It's down on the coastal Cordillera Belt. It's, uh, it was a greenfields project that we were very fortunate to have made a, a discovery on. And, you know, it's very rare that, and you, I've been doing this for 35 years, and, you know, I wouldn't even need my whole hand count on the number of times I've been fortunate enough to make a bona fide greenfields discovery. So, you know, we're really excited about that. Um, we followed that discovery program up with a subsequent drill program, and now we've uh, traced that mineralization over about 800 meters. So we just began drilling actually yesterday, uh, to follow up on, on that success. And uh, we're going to drill 4,000 meters there in order to, you know, really see what this thing could be. Um, the nice thing about it is it's, it's, uh, it's got excellent uh, access to infrastructure. It's, uh, again, surrounded by mines. I mean, you can't really go anywhere in Chile without being surrounded by mines. Is one of the reasons we love the country so much. And um, uh, so, yeah, we, we're really excited about what's going to come with that one. And then finally, and not Lastly, or leastly, but uh, you know, we just we just we have to manage our resources. So we're probably not going to see a lot of news on this one uh, in the in the, in the next twelve months or so. But we have the Andrea project, which is located up on the El Indio belt, which is again a very exciting belt. Again, another place where the this sort of bulk tonnage porphyry type mineralization was not really appreciated historically, and we're going to take that view as we explore Andrea. Great. Okay. So maybe let's go back to Santa Cecilia. Uh, and could you just give us uh, an overview of the historical work there and kind of the context of that with uh, those operating around you and, and kind of how that set you up for the, the program that you started this year? Yeah, sure. I mean, the historical work was really limited. Uh, back in 1988 to 1990, Anglo was in there. They put the first road into the project and, and they were drilling for shallow oxide gold, of which they found some. They drilled about, I think, 40 holes for 14,000 meters. Nice cohesive body. They also put in some exploration additives, looking for high grade veins. Found those as well, but for them at the time, they needed uh, you know higher grades. It was remote, and so they decided to leave. And as Sean said, you know, 22 years passed. Uh, all these porphyries were found all around the Santa Cecilia project, 
And, you know, again, the owner put a couple of deep holes in and lo and behold, there's a porphyry there. Uh, at which point, you know, when I first went to the project, it was clear as day to me that this was underexplored. And, you know, I've been very fortunate. I used to work with Newmont and so I've seen some of the great districts in the world. And you know, I just had that feeling again, you know, OK, here we are. It's the big show. It's got a lot of potential, really very limited drilling. Uh, we have to get this at all costs is what I said to Sean uh, upon that first visit. And luckily we did. So that's really the extent of the historical work uh, at Santa Cecilia. Okay, great. And then, you know, as I said, you, you did start the program this year. You did two uh, drill holes and you recently got the results. Could you just explain what you found in those results and the significance? Yeah, no, we started work on the project last December. Uh, and we we uh, completed towards the end of May. It was, a, it was a multifaceted program where we did a lot of surficial work because it had really never been done. So we had to do the basics like soil geochemistry grids and, you know, basic geologic mapping. So we weren't drilling blind in the dark. Um, we did, though, put a couple of holes into the area that had been historically drilled because we had that information. And, um, you know, we were trying to drill across a northeast structural corridor because if you go to Caspiche, of course, is the nearest analog right beside our project, you know, the 25 million ounces and the 7 billion pounds of copper, its high-grade core was oriented northeast. So we wanted to cross that kind of structure. And, and that proved to be fruitful because we were able to, in our second drill hole, increase the gold grade by 80% uh, over what had historically been hit. And if you look again to Caspiche as an analog, um, it's that high grade core that they have, which runs about a gram per ton gold and 0.4% copper, is surrounded by exactly the same tenor of mineralization that we just hit. So we know we're close. We also saw geologic uh, features, you know, higher temperature alteration in this second drill hole. So, you know, that sort of corroborates the, the grade and, and that type of alteration that we saw, the sericite chloride style alteration. You also see that at Caspiche. So, again, you know, we just felt that we were vectoring in very closely. Um, the other part of our work that we that was very significant and impactful for us is we found, uh, you know, three porphyry bodies within a kilometer and a half of the Caspiche uh, deposit that are undrilled but are mineralized at surface. You know, Pircus Norte, we were running 0.3 to 0.83 grams per ton gold on surface, you know, not a drill hole in sight. Hemelos Norte, total surprise for us. You know, all of a sudden that thing's going from 0.15 grams per ton up to a gram and a half. And again, no drilling. So... What we would like to do, of course, is, you know, get a drill rig, look for the high-grade causative intrusion around where we have been drilling in the central part of the project, and then, you know, have a second rig, start testing these new porphyries that have never seen a drill hole. Perfect. Okay. Um, so once you start up again uh, in the fourth yeah. quarter, I believe um, the focus is going to be testing some other targets and uh, continuing following up those excellent results you got. Exactly. Yeah. 100%. Perfect. Um, so let's turn to your Margarita project now. Um, are you going to be drilling there soon? And, you know, maybe tell us about what your work plans are there. Well, we started drilling yesterday, so that's very soon or yeah, now. Um, yeah, no, look, for us, we made this Greenfields discovery. Obviously, we had some very good grades. You know, I think our first hole was 90 meters of 0.94% uh, copper and 0.84 grams gold. Uh, the gold was a complete surprise. In the IOCG belt in northern Chile, even up into southern Peru, you don't really see that kind of tenor of gold mineralization. Uh, so we had to go back and do a gold geochemistry grid over the project. And all this being said is our focus will be on expanding our discovery because the gold geochemistry shows us another 800 meters on top of, uh, of extension potential. Uh, we have some very near discovery uh, ideas that we want to go after, flat-lying mantos just to the west of where we drilled, uh, which we think could be very uh, productive. And then more importantly to me is there's a bunch of undrilled targets that showed up, and they have the exact same signatures from a geophysical perspective, geochemical, geology all looks the same as our discovery. Let's see if we can find a second body of mineralization. And if we can... And you can start looking at the mines nearby us and their discovery history, like Monto Verde and Santo Domingo, where they're found one body sort of at a time and it becomes, you know, a, a real world class deposit. So we've got 4,000 meters on deck right now. We expect to complete that, you know, probably within a couple of months and results, uh, first results out of there come uh, mid-September, probably through mid-November. Perfect. Okay. Uh, maybe just as we uh, wrap up here, Sean, could you uh, outline the key catalysts that investors have to look forward to? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, 
we uh, we were very fortunate now. We've worked really, really hard for a very long time to sort of set set the table the way it is right now. Which meaning, you know, we've got a seven year community uh, uh, agreement in place, so that's going to cover the entire time it takes us to drill Santa Cecilia. Um, you know, we've done all the superficial work, as Mike said. We had to sort of go to the drawing board on really both projects and and get that get that knowledge so that we're not uh, making big errors with drilling. We were able to refine our targets uh, to, to, to give ourselves the best shot at success. So all that to say, all our capital, all our human resources are going to be directed towards the, the, the activity for a junior mining company that creates the most value, the most excitement, the, you know, the real reason why it's fun to do this job, which is drilling. And uh, so every news release here forward really, uh, and that's about the projects, is going to be about Drill results, drill results, drill results. So I think both, I mean, that's the ultimate catalyst for a junior mining company is you, you, we do all this stuff so you can ask the earth a question, what do you got for us with the drill? And you get the answers and then we share the answers. And I think that's going to be, I don't personally, uh, you know, I've been a, lo a long time since I've worked on a project that I was uh, this excited about. So I think we're going into a really fun time for the company. Excellent. So thank you uh, for joining me today, Sean and Michael. Thank you. Thank you.